Okay. There we go. And we're live. Um, no, this is not my first time playing Runner. My first time playing Runner on PC. Okay. Um, I played are the we, Wii version. Are we unmuted in live? Yes, we are unmuted in oh. live. So okay. Hello, sorry. So, I just jumped straight into answering your question. I just, just jumped straight into conversation. <laughs> uh, I was asking Susan uh, which uh, BitTrip games she'd played before. Played all of it because um, all of the BitTrip games were released on the Wii as like um, a collection, Wii weren't were. they? They they started off as WiiWare individually. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there was a collection eventually. Uh, sorry, just one second. Okay. Um, yeah, they were released, and then they were compiled, and on a disc. Yes. From what I remember. Um, uh, pretty, pretty excellent games. They are really good games. Um, I like these versions better than um, you know they they updated them for um, number two. Right. Yep. They updated the graphics, made them kind of a bit snazzier, and like I more prefer 3D. the I pixely prefer the, ones. Yeah, as I agree. Well. Yeah. Um, but I like the Bitrick games because, like, as rhythm games go, they're quite, um, they're pretty solid, and um, they had nice variations on the theme as well. So, like, Runner is well a runner, but there was there was the one where you're like a, a spaceship, and there was one where you're like a pong type one. That's that's beat, I think. Beat, yeah. Oh man, yeah. that drove me nuts. I love it though. Um, but yeah, Runner's a classic one. But they've done something special for the holidays, so fingers crossed this works. Oh god, um, it's not working. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, my controller's not working. <laughs> this was working earlier. I tested it. Oh, sure you did. But I did. I did. Yeah. Oh wow, that is not working at all. You gonna um, try uh, reconnecting the controller or yeah. alt tabbing? I'm gonna try reconnecting the controller. Fingers crossed it'll work. Oh, because it thinks it's bloody number two, that's why. Uh, Stupid thing. I get to listen to this um, fun music though. Oh, now it doesn't even know that I have a controller plugged in. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Xbox pads, you're ridiculous. Anyway, welcome to um, Technical Issues stream. Welcome to Technical Issues Tuesdays. Technical Issues Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> that works for me. Um, I've not played oops, with a Steam controller before. It's not really that big a deal. You're just using the buttons, really. That's not even the right fucking Steam controller. Oh my god, what is wrong? Technical issue Tuesday! Oh, there we go. That's the right one. Oh, perils are two Steam controllers and two identical... Um, Buttons. I haven't checked any levels or anything, by the way. I did like the fanfare up there. That was very good. Oh, did you? <laughs> um, do, 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 do. I didn't check any of the um, sound levels on the stream. For me, it's like quite intense what's going on in the back of back. You've got like weird Christmas music going on. <laughs> That's about. It's about right. It's about right. Okay, no, that's not working either. Fuck's sake. <laughs> we we may get some people in the chat going. We want the music louder, but apart from that, honestly, it's we can hear you pretty clearly, and there is still music. So okay, well the music's important. So. As long as I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, you are not having it at all, are you? My goodness. This was working earlier, which is which is kind of what's annoying me even more. But holiday holiday jam collection, courtesy of No Sleep. Yeah. So now we get to like it's 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 like a. Oh, you think it's controller number two? You know I can't bother with this. I'll just play with the keyboard. 
Sure. Is that working? Yeah, that's working at least. Let's see. Did you try alt tabbing? I did try alt tabbing. Oh, okay. There is new firmware for your Steam controller. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not really the. Why. That might be why, but that's not. I can't really deal with that right now. Yeah. Right, let's do um, first contact. So, is Runner your favourite of the classic? Uh, remind me what the other ones are, and I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, you get Runner. You get Beat. Which got... one's Which one's Beat? Is that the one with like the pulsating um, dot? No, I think Beat is. Isn't Beat Pong? Oh, it's a bunch. Okay. That's the Pong one. I will Space. go through the series for you. Yes, so Bit Trip Beat, the first release, uh, 2009, uh, was the uh, their take on Pong. Uh, then you had Bit Trip Core, and that's the one where you take control of a plus shape in the middle of the screen. And it's got the laser. Ah, uh, Core drove me nuts. Uh, then you get Void, uh, and that's the one where you move a pixelated circle around the screen. Oh. Sort of eight, eight sort of directions. Okay. Uh, and then Runner uh, was the fourth installment. And that was, uh, I think, either Runner or the one after it was the last of the original WiiWare. Uh, yeah, Fate. Fate is the last of the. Oh, thing. which one's Fate. Fate? Fate is a shmup. Uh, the game oh, Commander I remember. Video. It's, like, it's like on the rails, isn't it? Yeah, the game sees Commander Video travelling across a set path, able to move anywhere along this path and shoot in any direction. Um, oh, cool. Featuring um, cameo appearances by Super Beat Boy. Um, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed um, that one, and I also enjoyed Beat, I think. And I like Runner. Um, I think like I first played Runner um, at part of an event. <laughs> Right. Um, and they had it going on the um, projector, and it was like they were debuting, you know, the collection. Yes. Which is fine. Um, so I was doing that. I I got up and I started playing it because like yeah, you played it and you were on the projector, and I I got um it was at one of the, like quite advanced levels. Uh huh. And I got to a point where oh shit, it got to a point where um, <laughs> it was um quite difficult. And I was playing it and I was smashing it, it was so good. And then like I fucked up at the end. And I hadn't realised how many people at that point were like watching me because there was like an audible kind of <laughs> the, crowd, oh! the crowd had grown. Yeah. Over, and then I was over like the duration of your performance. I was like, I am a rhythm queen <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but well, that, that. it has always been one of your strong genres. I've seen I've seen you in actual rhythm machines, so That's just true. You're the total stereotype of someone who lives in, like, an arcade district. Because <laughs> you, you, you used to live near a whole bunch of arcade machines in London, so... Well, the sad thing is, is that the Chocodera no longer exists. Yeah, yeah, I heard about like, that. Like, I was there, like, the other day, right? And it was just... I mean, it, it's broken my heart before to see it, but... It broke my heart again because it was just one giant shitty souvenir store. Is that the one with the escalator? Yeah. Well, it's all yeah. gone now. There's no escalator anymore. No bowling alley at the top? Nope, no, nothing. Uh, nothing. They they boarded all that back part off. And the front bit is just like some crazy sort of... Um, um, some crazy sort of... Uh, just a giant crap store, basically. That's super disappointing. That's, that's on my list of strange buildings to buy if I'm... <laughs> yeah. And then just fill with things, turn it back into what it was, basically. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, back, still... it had like real heyday, like even before I was really started going there regularly. It was. It used to be a did it, years and years ago. Was it a Sega place? Mm. I, think, I think maybe. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm talking like nineties. Yeah. 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 It has. It has history. It has history, but. Yeah, I, I think like one time they wanted to um, turn it into a hotel or something. Oh, okay. Right. 
but I would have been um, okay with an arcade or to a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I think like they so the bottom parts would just be reserved for like retail and stuff. Yeah. But then the like upper levels were supposed to be transformed to a hotel. But the project never really got off the ground, and I'm not really sure why. I wonder whether it's like one of those um, poisonous projects. Sure. Where just people try and think that they're gonna make something of it, and then they just don't. Or like it's too expensive, or like it it's too complicated. Yeah, it stays in limbo forever and ever, and becomes a crappy souvenir store. And I'm never a hundred percent sure how those things even make their money, because they're all there's so many of them, like all right yeah. next to each other, and they all sell the same shit. Yeah. I have to assume it's just bulk leftover goods. Basically, yeah. Uh, we have uh, in Kilmarnock, uh, around about where I live, we have three. We've got a pound, a pound land opposite a home bargains next to a discount home store. Really? And it's all the same thing in all three of them. Although I guess pound land leans, leans towards more like certain brands. And, Home bargains is a sort of everything shop, and the mm. other one is more sort of hardware. But basically, there are three variations in the same shop. Um, the good news is that I can usually find uh, once in a while I can find like a uh, something that would cost a lot more at a real shop. Uh, not just talking food and stuff. I mean, like uh, a couple of years ago, I found a uh, uh, KK slider plush. Nice. Uh, in, in one of those, and it was like three pounds. It was great. Um, ah, like, awesome. sorry. You'd be like fifteen plus somewhere else, probably, uh, for for an official Nintendo watch. Yeah, no, of course. That's a rare find. That yeah, it's just, it's that kind of thing. Like, but you either have to be there like pretty regularly. Uh huh. To notice or just the, the to notice the difference. In stock. Exactly. Yeah. Or to be like, or be like super, super, super lucky. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I found uh, some World of Warcraft Mega Blocks in there as well. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, of um, the Lich King Arthas and his dragon. Nice. And it was like even on Amazon, it was still going for like twenty-five, and I think I got it for like eight. Nice. Ah, so, oh, UFO fudge. Um. Still, uh, yeah. So that event that I was at when I played this, yeah, there was a, they were offering T-shirts as a prize. I still have that T-shirt. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's interesting, the sort of uh, quote-unquote swag. Yeah. Picked, picked up over the years. I've still got those uh, real-time world mints. Really? Where did you get those? Uh, when I visited Real Times Worlds, uh, uh, I was at up in Dundee for a talk that they were doing about ABP back when ABP looked really promising. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, sweet, sweet a, Halcyon days. <laughs> yeah, it had it, like, at the time, it had a really killer character uh, creation to it. And we were all like, wow, this is going to be brilliant. Imagine this, but with, like, GTA, but online, this will never fail. Um, and then it is. But, uh, yeah, I went up there to play to see a talk, uh, a demonstration of that. I was supposed to meet Dave Jones, but he was busy that day. Uh, oh Dave, no, right at the end! Sorry. The, the, the founder of uh, DMA Design. Nice. Uh, creator of Lemmings before they became Rockstar. Um, but unfortunately he was busy that day. Uh, but I did get to play an early version of Crackdown 2. Uh, and what was interesting was I played it much earlier in its dev cycle when it had a bit more of a focus on a, it was going to have a bigger story mode and, and stuff. it wasn't just like 100 percent orbs all the time <laughs> aha like the it was more like crackdown one yeah um but evidently they ran out of time or money they were just like fuck it just put all the orbs in you can that's all people collected right but then they discovered that people actually did like other elements of crackdown one um so that was unfortunate, but I've still got the crack. I've still got the real-time world mints. So. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Did you eat the mints though? Do you still have the mm. mints? Because that's I'm, gross. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think the mints may be gone. The actual mints, but I've got the case. Uh, so I was the gonna case say. 
It's a shame there's uh, really not too much left in Dundee in terms of game development now. Is there not? Everyone's moved, haven't they? Yeah, the big one that's still there are uh, Yo-Yo Games. Okay. Who are the current owners of uh, GM Studio, the engine. Uh, a multi-platform game development engine that started is called... Started being, originally it was called Game Maker, now it's GM Studio. Uh, which you may recall is the engine that Undertale was made in. Nice. Uh, so, I own a license to GM Studio, so if I'd ever needed, you know, like, one-to-one -one tech support, that's actually possible. Really? I would, to, <laughs> I, I, I would just need to, you know, get a mega busted on D, but it would be technically possible, they're still there, I believe. Um, yeah, it was uh, originally like a, it was like a Swedish guy, or a Finnish guy, or something, uh, and he sold the license to... Uh, Yo Yo Games in Scotland. Um, and so now they handle that. Nice. Unstoppable Mr. Video, this level is called. Oh shit. Um, kick. Okay. You have acquired the kick? Yeah, I've acquired the kick. Okay. I'd rather. Stop. Um. I'd rather be played on a controller because. There's a lot going on, <laughs> and it's hard to remember. Ah, it's hard to remember where. Um, I mean, what we could take what. it. We could take it to our amazing technical difficulty screen. Um, we could do, think. but I'm not sure I can be bothered. Um, we'll, if... we'll, see, we'll see if this becomes undoable with the, the keyboard. I think we've got all the controls now, so it's just me remembering. Uh, without like. Hitting poor old Commander Video in the balls with a crystal. So I'm trying to remember what other games that Commander Video is cameoed in at this point. Because he's got to have been in a couple. Uh, he turns up in, you know, like Meat Boy does in other indie yeah. games. Uh, well, I mean, in terms of animation, he's not exactly difficult to. Um... Exactly. He's very much uh, exactly what he is. He's... He's a perfect mascot for 8-bit. Uh, Atari to NES era games. Oh, not enough time. I mean, Kick. Runner is basically Pitfall. The rhythm game. Um, when was Pitfall? Pitfall was 85, 84. Uh, a year, a couple of years after... Oh, oh. Let me check that. Oh, oh no, Pitfall was 82. Oh, oh blimey. Uh, but it does... Yeah, it did come after uh, Donkey Kong, which is generally considered the first platform game. Uh, 81 was Donkey Kong. Uh, so, yeah, the... These sort of multicolored lines that come out of the back, the back of Commander Video, where you've got uh, uh, the normal skin on. I know you've got the Santa one on right now. Um, hi, Mistress Lilith. Welcome to the stream. It's good to see you. Um, Mistress Lilith ordered a console that plays like 26 systems. That's only for four inches for only 70 bucks. So, is this a follow up to the Retro Freak, uh, Lilith? Uh, which of which I know you own one. <laughs> uh, I also have a retro freak. I've forgotten all the controls again. Wait, so left is kick and down is slide and jump is space bar. This is really awkward to play on a keyboard. Is it, a, is it another emulator box, Mistress? Well, uh, the retro freak and the re uh, the retro freak was like a Japanese take on the Retron Five. Um, kind of more elegant uh, and could also do the PC Engine. No, it's a new console. What is it? Raspberry Pi based? What, what is it? Ah, oh, right in the face. Well, are you just trolling us and talking about the NES Mini or something? <laughs> but no, it's, uh, no, it's not, but it's a similar... It's a similar, similar idea. concept, yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, generally speaking, these ones are about like playing your own actual cartridges oh, okay. or playing or playing ROMs from an SD card, uh, and you can make your own out of like a Raspberry Pi or a small PC. 
I mean, that's effectively what my arcade machine is. Fair enough. Oh. But uh, having a dedicated one that's all pre preset up and also accepts real cartridges is pretty cool. It's living the dream. Uh, Indigo can play GameCube, Saturn, and Wii, so it must nice. have Dolphin in there. Uh, unless it's actually, you know, maybe like hardware in somewhere, uh, like, which seems unlikely. Probably Dolphin. Uh, also, Sinclair and C64. Uh, but this new one can also play Mame, so yeah, be a, it could be a full replacement for an arcade cap. Uh, most most retro pie setups, unless it's really powerful, won't handle uh, later Mame because that starts getting into like uh, emulating later arcade machines gets a bit computationally expensive. But early arcade machines, everything up until like you know Street Fighter Three. It's pretty doable by almost anything at this point. So you can make a you can make a small arcade cab out of just a laptop if you tear the screen off and all that sort of stuff. Hmm. So this one's called the Retro Engine Sigma. I'll have to look into that. Oh, you little bastard! Sorry, it's getting a bit intense up in here. <laughs> Must have been uh, fairly recently unveiled, uh, Lilith, because I'm seeing news articles about it from about 16 minutes ago. Uh, and again, Lilith is really into her, uh, her ROMs and ROM patches. Uh, she plays a lot of patched games that have like, like difficulty modifiers and stuff. Um, I ordered one for my cousin too, since it's so small and his apartment is pretty small because they were so cheap. No, fair enough. This is this is the sort of thing that we always dreamed of, isn't it? I mean, that's basically... Yeah, yeah, when you're younger, absolutely. Yeah, and I yeah. mean, it's basically... Um, does it output HDMI? Is it 720p? Or is it, what's it emulating? Let's see. Oh, spring. All right, so it, it, oh. Uh, Amstrad CPC, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, Atari ST, the Amiga's rival, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, Main, the MSX, the computer that the Metal Gear series debuted on, uh, the N64, N64 emulation is still pretty dodgy, <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested to see how it's Oh no, having to sneeze while playing this game is like the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Hey, Nightbot, advertising us to Lilith. Hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nightbot. <laughs> Thanks, Nightbot. Uh, all right, as as HDMI out. Good, good. Um, so basically, back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean 2007. You could do this effectively. What this product is by modifying a original Xbox. Yeah. With with uh, uh, a dashboard called XBMC. Which you did for Fran one time, didn't you? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I mean, uh, no, nothing of the sort. I mean. <laughs> so, so XBMC uh, is like a complete dash replacement for the original Xbox. And the original Xbox oh. had a, a, a modified GeForce 3 and a modified Pentium 3, which nowadays is laughable. But mm -hmm. back then, you know, if you dedicate those entirely to emulation, uh, pretty much perfect 720p emulators of a whole ton of systems. So, um, just as a side note, I love how like, how even though he's just like very simple pixels, I could still tell that Commander Video is disappointed in me for not getting that bonus. <laughs> just the the slight just the, just like the side eye. <laughs> yeah, the, the slight shrinking of the white on. Yeah. His... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good animation. Sorry, anyway, you were saying. Uh yeah, so yeah, even though it was uh, not an ultra powerful console, the. It was effectively a, P a modified PC, so it's pretty good for emulation. Uh, and even though the original Xbox, generally for most games, didn't output 720p, it was hardware capable of it, and so you could enable that in XBMC pretty easily. Uh, so it would output 720p and 1080i, um, and it would also do that for all the emulators, uh, which was awesome. So back in the day, 
that was the equivalent of like a retro pie or one of these boxes. Um, XBMC, if you do not know, became a media player called Cody, uh, which is really popular now on Android devices. Oh, okay. But if you actu actually look up the developer of Cody, Cody is actually XBMC. Uh, and XBMC used to stand for Xbox Media Center. Mm. So, you know, they've tried to hide their origins over the years. Now that they've gone kind of legit, but Cody is totally just XBMC. <laughs> uh, which is really funny to me because I watched the whole evolution of that start as a, a dashboard replacement, then a dashboard replacement that could run emulators uh, and a media player, and oh. now it's like full on Android media player. Can't escape your roots, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Can't forget them. Uh, so yeah, but this uh, this Sigma engine uh, that Lilith is pointing out seems pretty cool. Uh, it runs uh, a version of Arbian OS, which I have to assume is a Linux distro, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's a Android distro. Right? Although Android is derived from Linux, so what am I talking about? <laughs> Ah, oh, son of a crab. Hey, Trinan. Okay, so Welcome to the stream. Bit Welcome, running. Trinan. Yeah, sorry, but not seen you for a while, Trinan. Um, uh, I I did give a shout out to the Backloggery channel there. That ah, that was Bit doing Bitrip. Yeah, and they're all they're all fans of the oh, retro. So. That was stupidness. Here, yeah, I forget how much of this game like relies on you knowing the level. Yeah, that it does get to a certain point with. Uh, some of these uh, more oh, advanced no. ones. Did it again? Fuck's sake. Um, so I'm just looking at this now, Lilith. Uh, I guess the thing about this one, the you know compromise, quote unquote, is that it uh, doesn't uh, have a cartridge reader like the Retro Freak does. Which can actually just straight up read cartridges and dump the wrong. Uh, but for most people, I imagine this is this is everything they need because it looks like you can just plug in USB controllers. I was going to say you don't need to do anything extra to it. Is yeah. it just like pretty plug and play? Yep. Um, actually, you just came in when I saw Bitrip was running. Huh? Fair enough. Oh, I just fell off the edge for you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, good old Bitrip though. I do like this game. Um, yeah, I'm not convinced by um, Bitrip 2, because it adds so, a weird voiceover and stuff, and it's just like, um, it's like, Commander oh. Video went on his dick journey to... Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you're like, no, shut up. I, I feel like they... I mean, I, I can understand why they changed. It's because... Um, ah, fudge. But they already nailed the retro aesthetic so well with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like, well, we either do the retro aesthetic again with voxels again, yeah, or we go completely different and they decided to go Saturday morning cartoon, sort of weird, hyper stylized 70s. Is that Rob? Yeah, he's um, making um, his latest hobby is um, leather working so he's making something in the other room. I hear if you get your leather working up to 500 you can craft ascended leather. I know up. right? <laughs> um, Lilith says I think the indigo can dump discs which is a big reason I want both. Yeah so as opposed to this retro en an engine which main advantages is it seems to be able to emulate a lot of systems but is quite cheap. It seems to be running about $49 which is insane. Ah, oh, uh, man I hit that room. Uh, compared to the Retro Freak anyway, which was like, you know, two hundred dollars or something for most distributors. But the Indi Indigo can actually still connect. Is uh, Lilith is the Indigo the one that has modular dumping ports? Because I think I actually do remember that project now. It's like you can insert different kind of cartridge readers and things. Um, so it's like a. It's like you can turn it into a specific type of. Like, it'll emulate everything, but if you want it to read a specific format, like, oh, I want it to read Sega CD discs, or I want it to read PS1 discs, or something, 
uh, then you can make a hardware modification to it to add a, a disc oh. Finish that I got level. it. Yeah, finish that level. Whew. It's getting complicated. Are you going for all golds? Um, not really. I'm just completing. Oh, they do I did get a bonus for this one though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the indie goal might be the one I'm thinking. Ah. But, uh, but yeah, if that uh. If the emulation is perfect at 720p plus for the systems listed, uh, that $50 console will be pretty killer. It just does pretty much the same thing as the Retro Freak, but it's like a quarter of the price. Although it doesn't have a cartridge reader, but for most that's probably not a problem. Gotta um, be honest, I'm guessing <laughs> a lot of people are just going to stick ROMs on an SD card. Fair enough. Um, Trinit says that this looks like a hard game. Um, it is and it isn't. Like, the controls themselves are quite simple. Cause you a lot of muscle have, like, memory. Yeah, a lot of muscle memory. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, like, reflexes and learning. And the rhythm helps as well, but... See, oh, I forgot how to. I forgot that I had to kick. Um, there seem to be many a bit trip game. Yeah, we. Yeah, there are many, many bit trip games. Um. Yeah, he does raise a good point. The controls for Super Meat Boy are pretty simple. Yeah, no, fair enough. And that's a fairly difficult platformer at times. Uh, but you never feel cheated in Super Meat Boy. Uh, no, you that always that. feel like the failing is yourself rather than yeah. the game. Yeah. Like, how, how about this? Um, how, yeah. how tight do you feel this is? Yeah, I feel like, ah, like if I fuck up like I just did then, that is my fault for <laughs> It's not... usually, yeah. Yeah, so I don't I, feel... I don't feel like cheesed off or anything if I yep. lose, because I'm just like, well, it's just my fault, I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Um, which is how all good rhythm games should be, really. <laughs> Are you on a mechanical? No. The standard keyboard. Yeah. How are you even playing? I know, right? <laughs> um, actually, we had this. Um, so I was looking at all, at the um, at our stream archives yes the other day. Yes. And we were talking about. I was looking at the one for that we did for Code Seven. And right, yeah. at the beginning of that, there was a big discussion from you about um, mechanical keyboards. Uh -huh. And Rob was listening in on this, and he was. And as you were talking, he was saying stuff, and then you would say it like right after he'd he'd mentioned it, and he'd be like, "Ha ha, this guy knows what he's talking about." And like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm um, uh, I'm a big fan of mechanicals, specifically brown keys. Uh, I think they have a good compromise between the clickiness of blues and the linear push of a, a red. But basically the idea is that mechanicals, um, heavy duty, gonna last you a long time, it's like buying a good mattress. Um, the creator of I Wanna Be The Guy, if I recall correctly, said they're part of Super Meat Boy harder than his game. I won't quote verbatim what he said of Dark, Dark World 6 or 5. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that... The end game of Super Meat Boy, on especially on the Dark Worlds, the the, the ultimate hard versions of each world, uh, definitely get absolutely ridiculous, like really just insane. Uh, and one of I want to be the guy is almost intentionally a troll platforming game. So for him to say that it has uh, that Super Meat Boy has harder levels than I want to be the guy is quite a big statement. So I, I but I believe it. I, what I remember, I have beaten Super Meat Boy, um, but it's been a while. I do remember it being super tight though, so maybe I just appreciated that and didn't really... No, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a masochist as well though, so when something's hard I'm just like, well, I'll have to keep playing this. Um, oh, too, too slow. Wait. Well, it says, uh, also, recently I got my setup so that everything is fed through the Gato, so I don't have to mess with any wires over again. I just have to switch inputs to my HDMI switcher to whatever I want to stream, and it'll stream. 
Nice, nice. yeah. Uh, I've got uh, I've got something similar, but I don't have a switcher set up, so that seems even better. Uh, I pull something off of my amp, which is effectively a, a fancy switcher, because uh, it's got four HDMI in, uh, and then that goes to a box that uh, splits the signal in two, and definitely not because I want to strip HDCP. Uh, definitely not. Definitely no illegal things happening here. Uh, so, yeah, the PS3 and some other consoles are really finicky if you uh. about sending out HDCP. So you want to strip that unofficially. Do I jump red or do I slide red? Um, let's see. Oh, fudge. Looks like jump, but it's hard to tell. Oh, it's jump. And that, well, so the black must be slide. One way, one way to eight HDMI. One, uh, one three-way HDMI. One eight-way ah. AV and one five-way S video. Blimey. Get rid of that AV. Boo, composite. <laughs> boo. RGB scarf for life, yo. <laughs> uh, no, I understand that some American consoles aren't as easy to get RGB out of. And also, you probably will need a frame by server here. No! Place, you, I believe you are one of so. um, Someone needs to send Lilith a, a frame by basically, is what I'm saying. Send me one while you're at it. Like, <laughs> uh, I would love to get RGB to HDMI through my Amiga. Although, at this point, I may as well just emulate an Amiga with Amiga forever. Oh, did, you, did I tell you I corrected Eurogamer the other day? Did you? Yeah. You sassy yeah. little bitch. What did you say? Yeah. They were, uh, they did a video on Cannon Fodder. Yeah. Uh, which is a <laughs> legendary Amiga game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they decided to emulate it with the GOG version, which is based on the PC port. Okay. And me and everybody else, not just me, everyone was like, Oh man, why aren't you playing the PC, uh, the, the Amiga version? Because the Amiga version is the only one with the actual song. Yeah. Uh, War is never gonna. War has never been so much fun. Yeah. Uh, like the whole the whole thing about that game is it's a giant parody. That's why I had a flipping copy on it, uh, and made the, the British Royal Legion really upset and everything else. Um, so the PC version just uses like a sound blaster or an ad lib, and doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the Amiga version, and also doesn't have any voices for the songs. Uh, so everyone called them out. Uh, and I was like in the YouTube comments, guys, come on, Amiga oh, emulation. Oh no! Sorry, go on. I was like, guys, come on, Amiga emulation is so easy. Uh, and then he, they replied back to me, oh, but emulation is a little bit naughty. And I was like, uh, generally speaking, you are correct. However, Amiga emulation through Amiga Forever, which was the thing I already mentioned, is 100% legal because you actually purchase a copy of the system ROMs when you purchase Amiga Forever. So it is in every way legal. Now, where you get your disc images after that, that's up to you. <laughs> but but Amiga Forever includes tools to convert Amiga floppy disks to the disc image format used by Amiga Forever. So, uh, and you claim to have the discs. So, 100% legal way of emulating Amiga. And it would have been a lot better for that game. Oh no, I missed it, never mind. And there's your, there's your history lesson of why you should play PC ports of Amiga games from God. I'm learning so much. You should just get, you should just emulate a real Amiga. Uh, now nah, most, of, most of those PC ports were pretty solid, but for soundtracks generally, the PC didn't catch up until the late 90s. Whereas the Amiga had like a really killer soundtrack uh, early on. Uh, I just completed uh, quite a difficult level. My eyeballs are... Um... Nice! Yes, I'm catching up. There you go. But I've also a bit wrecked. <laughs> got, got a little dance from you there? Yeah, victory dance! Um, now what? Oh no, shit, there's more! <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I thought that was the end of the world, but no, we're to 111. I don't know how, how deep the rabbit hole goes. I am currently... I've got my 3DS open, and I am um, updating Animal Crossing. Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. I 
community. Yeah. At least it's cool that they like weed your town though with the update. Oh, thank God. I know, right? You may um, as well just start fresh <laughs> if they didn't. <laughs> just burn the whole town to the ground and start again. Yeah. Um, but I put the. Um, I put Isabel the... cowering in a box. <laughs> I put the um, beauty thing on, you know, the option the, where you could choose sh for shops to open late or... Oh, sure, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put that on, so I wondered whether that would make a difference, but I don't know, maybe after this long, probably not. <laughs> oh dear, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I forgot there was some sort of, like, minor rule adjustments you can make to the town. Uh, if you tell Isabel, it's like, oh, I'd prefer if things were open later, or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very, very minor, but they're still, um... They're still something, yeah. Yeah. Um, I fell down the 3DS screen rabbit hole. Did you? Do you know about this? No. Alright, so there are two types of screens on 3DSs. You've got IPS panels and TN panels. Um... And uh, I was thinking over the, the US Black Friday, because I've got a US 3DS. Yeah, yeah. I've got a new 3DS XL, even though I originally kind of wanted just a new 3DS, because uh, I wanted to, the faceplates and everything. Um, the new 3DS has only hit the States recently in limited bundles, uh, but over Black Friday they were selling one for $99. Uh, even after importing that, that would be a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it seems as if there are basically none, or well, very, very few, uh, new 3DS non-XLs that have the better screen type. Um, no. Were they manufactured? Were they manufactured later, or? Yeah, they're uh, manufactured later, and uh, well. I think it's just you've got a higher chance of getting the IPS panel, the better panel on the XL models. Okay. Uh, um, and so the difference between the two types of panel is that um, TNs these days on big screens have totally almost caught up to IPS. Uh, they're used on most PC monitors and big screens unless you get a very specific type of monitor. Uh, they're totally fine. But TNs on smaller screens tend to be a bit cheap and nasty. Mm -hmm. um, and Nintendo uses those for their 3DS systems. And you get, it's a total lottery whether you get a TN panel or an IPS panel on your 3DS. Um, now, after investigating this, even though I wanted to switch to the smaller new 3DS, the non XL, uh, with you know, the Black Friday deal and stuff. Uh, and then I would probably just sell my XL on and make back my money easily. Um, I discovered that almost all non-XLs have TN panels, and my XL has an IPS top panel. Okay. Which is hugely desired. The bottom panel is TN, but the top panel is definitely IPS, and you really can see the difference. Um, basically, IPS, the, the blacks are... Uh, contrasts better on black levels, uh, and viewing angles are a lot better. Okay. So when you move it left and right, the screen doesn't really wash out the same. Yeah. TN panels go very white very quickly. Um, so I've got a TN panel on my bottom screen, but I don't really care about this, the bottom screen as much. It's the, it's it's the top, the top screen, screen that matters, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was sitting at like 4am this morning, couldn't sleep, playing Ace Attorney Trilogy on my IPS screen and I was like, oh, this, this is brilliant. Oh no, if I ever find a good deal on a new 3DS, I'll just risk getting a worse screen now. Because oh, no. <laughs> I, I would be happy going for the smaller screen because it's got a sharper PPI. Okay. Uh, pixels per inch. Uh, so the overall screen resolution, you know, resolution versus screen size mm -hmm. is going to be sharper. Uh, but it'll be more washed out potentially if I get a TN screen, which is almost guaranteed. There are some people selling serial numbers that they know are IPS panels of non-XLs for like $250, $300. What? Yeah, because they know they can get that because it's the only way to guarantee um, 
a, an IPS screen with from Nintendo, it's a total lottery. Mm. And I've seen XLs that have TN screens, and they're, they look, you know, they're they're usable still. But man, comparing it to my current screen, I'm like, wow. Okay, I don't want to lose this now. <laughs> Uh, so it was a, a grass is greener on the other side situation until I realised what I have. I've, I've actually got an IPS screen on the top one. So like, mm. I also got spoiled by my Vita. I've got an original model PlayStation Vita that I picked up second hand. Okay. In pretty good nick. That's a very British way of saying it. Pretty good condition. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it has the original OLED screen. And the later Vitas have... Uh, either TN or IPS screens, and they're really good ones, but they're not OLED. Uh, and once you compare it against an actual OLED, like, people are like, ah, some people are like, actually trying to find the older betas now. Okay. Um, so before they did the slim model, they were all OLED. I don't know if there exists any slim models with an OLED as well. That would be the ultimate version, but... Anyway, as you can see, I'm completely insane. So, uh, <laughs> listen, man, if you put down several hundred dollars for a piece of hardware, I expect it to be basically perfect. Uh, well, I suppose it's only fair, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really um, as detail oriented, shall we say, as you are. Yeah, so yeah, I probably I'm wouldn't a, notice. I'm the layperson wouldn't a, notice a difference, would they? I'm a, yeah, exactly. The TN panels, for example, and the, the non 3DS, or uh, non XLs. 3DS is, or the majority of them anyway, uh, are still totally fine. Uh, it's just that once you've gotten used to an IPS panel and you're like, oh, this looks a bit washed out, oh, oh no, what's wrong yeah. with this? Uh, you'll notice something you wouldn't have even cared about if you had been using it the whole time. Well, that's a price, Mr. That's a price when you take the, um, when you choose between a red and a blue pill, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Slilith says, I got a slim Vita because it has an add-on that gets an L2, R2, and L3, R3 R button. Oh. I think I've heard of that, but I'm not sure. That does sound vaguely familiar. That's really cool, though. Yeah, poor Vita. <laughs> it's like, and it is a really amazing piece of hardware that, like, got no support. So why really... why do you think it got no support though? Because on uh, paper, the memory cards cost a million dollars. Oh, what really? Oh god, it uses again. They, they made the same. Excuse me. They made the same mistake as the PlayStation Portable, and it uses a proprietary memory format. Uh, so you have to get Sony's memory cards hmm. that only they produce. There's no. It's not an SD card or anything. It's a. It's a weird PS Vita card, basically. Um, I suspect that's not the only reason. The other reason is, you know, the success of smartphones and the fact that Nintendo pretty much owns the every remainder market, yeah. of, this, of this sector. Um, uh, but when your memory cards cost as much as the console, in some cases... Uh, I've only got like a, a 4 and 8 gigabyte memory card for my Vita, and that's almost entirely filled up by Persona 4 Gold. Uh, uh, which is a shame because I've got a whole ton of games on PlayStation Plus that I can put onto my Vita. So I've got like versions of like a whole bunch of my Steam games, Rogue Legacy and Spelunky and uh, Binding of Isaac. Um, but I just don't have really have the space for them on my Vita. Mm. I've also got a ton of uh, PS1, PSN games that I got cheap uh, back in the day. I say back in the day. Recently-ish. Uh, they occasionally come up in dollar sales on the American PSN. And they are, you know, the better versions because they're NTSE. Uh, and I've got a ton of those, but without the space no! to put them on. I can't really put them on my memory card. Uh... So yeah, it's not like a, it's not like a, a 3DS where you can get a 32 gigabyte SD for, you know, like a tenner. Oh, I know. I just, I just saw it. I do like the. I do like the. I do like the the, the, the score counter increasing. Oh look at oh, your look at your hands off. <laughs> yeah, that one's gone like a little bit. Got a little bit funny. My left hand. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I always like the the hyper cool whatever it does. Yeah, yeah. 
But that's like when it starts to hurt the most, like your eyes. <laughs> so you're kind of like, this is cool, like I can hear the beat and the rhythm and all that lot, but my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Uh, Lilith says that the add-on for the, the Vita that gives it more controller buttons is by Hori, which is oh, a good sign. Yeah. They make pretty solid accessories. Mm -hmm. They were, for a long time, uh, in Japan, they were the only manufacturer Nintendo would allow to make accessories. Really? Yeah, for a long time. Like, officially, with the Nintendo stamp on them. Yeah. Um, that was a lot more lax in the West, I believe. Um, but still, Nintendo's always been really protective of putting that seal on anything. Mm. You know, except a couple of garbage games, but that's... Uh, <laughs> But, oh, we'll yeah. let that one slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you certainly won't see the officially licensed Nintendo product uh, symbol on a Game Genie. Hmm. Codemasters. <laughs> and they eventually, or the, the section of Codemasters that broke off from that eventually became Detail. And they still make save reading and writing devices for the 3DS. Which you can use to install custom firmware. I mean, uh... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> may, have had a, may have had a friend visiting me recently who primarily owns uh, European 3DS games but lost their European 3DS. Oh no! Uh, and I might have had my original NTSC 3DS. Remember the green one? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they might be borrowing that for a bit, and I nice. might have had to install a certain program that switches mm -hmm. regions. I kept, a, I kept my case, though. They weren't getting that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that the one I made you? It still fits my XL, believe it or not. Does it? <laughs> yeah, my, my my red XL, which has a clear hoary cover over it as well, because, I, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it has a... It is a glossy surface and that would drive me insane. Um, so, yeah, no, my, my monster still has space for the XL. Nice. <laughs> His belly's big enough. <laughs> His belly's big enough. And he's still got that section for the, the cards on the back as well. Which oh, really cool. Good. Oh, Yeah, glad. everybody I show that to thinks it's the most awesome thing. Really? Oh, I'm glad. You did put the design on Ready Up as well. I did a long time ago. It was a very well, speaking of which, should we should we talk about anything from the site yet, or should we leave that to the next time? Uh, let's leave it to the next time because I'm not 100% sure how it's all going to go yet. Cool. Okay. Although I think this should happening. be fine. Yeah, it's happening. Don't give. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I will while I'm here download Swap Doodle. The return of Nikki. Uh, oh yeah, because they got rid of that, didn't they? Yeah, because people was, were sending each other dick pics or something stupid. But no, they just brought it back, basically. Yeah, what's changed though? Like, I mean, in terms of if the problem was people abusing the system. I don't know. I think it's something to do with how Miiverse works now. Uh -huh. Miiverse didn't exist when Swap Note was That's originally true. implemented. So maybe they've got a secure t uh, hold on the friend system because. There's kind of an account system now. <laughs> kind of. Um, God, I hope the Switch is region free. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the only one. Like everybody is just like, oh come on! Everything except the 3DS, uh, in terms of handheld, was was region free. The original DS, most DSi stuff. There was a couple of limited DSi e shop stuff, but most of the time it was region free. Uh, and every handheld system before then, because my original Game Boy is from Singapore. Singapore? Yeah, I got it on the way back from Brunei in 1986. Uh, we picked up a green original Game Boy just before the pocket was introduced, I didn't know the pocket was being introduced, obviously, because I was nine and stupid. Uh, I didn't pay attention to that stuff, so um, grabbed a green original model Game Boy. Uh, in Singapore city. Uh, beautiful city. Uh... Ah! Oh, I'll wait for that to catch up. 
Oh, the devastation. I was like, I must be reaching the end. Hands starting to see. Oh, that stupid little red block. I was like, yeah, sorry, Common. I was like, shit, is that jump or slide? Jump or slide? Oh. Um, Mistress Lilith had a few Japanese Game Gear games. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I had a, I had a Game Gear uh, in like '95 or something. It was a year I asked for a Game Boy, funnily enough, in a related. Uh, and uh, the salesperson sold my dad on getting me a Game Gear instead. Which is a cool console, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know, the battery life is non-existent. Uh, the best thing about the Game Gear was that there was an adapter that let you plug in Master System games. Because they both use the same hardware. Although the Game Gear runs at a lower resolution. Uh, did not have any Japanese Game Gear games, so... Yeah, that trip to Brunei, I lived in Asia for six months. So many things, amazing things that I could have picked up there. Like, I remember seeing Famicoms and Super Famicoms all over the place and not understanding that they were just the NES and the SNES. Um, but oh well. Aww. It was around the time, it was 96, mid 96, so it was around the time the PS1 and N64, and N64 was being introduced and the, and the PS1 was starting to blow up. Um, so the markets there were changing quite a bit. But even back then, I saw Famicons everywhere, which are you know bootleg NES systems. Um, the SMS was big in Europe, yeah. Uh, it certainly was, yeah. Uh, SMS was probably as big as the NES in the in the UK, at least. Uh, you talk about what people's first games are, and they don't say, like, Super Mario Brothers or... Well, they might. They might say Super Mario Brothers. And they might say, um, you know, uh, Punch-Out or whatever, but they're probably as likely to say Alex the Kid yeah. on the Master System, or the Master, the Master System version of Sonic, which is a completely different game from its Mega Drive counterpart. Not just a port; it's a different game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Sega had a really like uh, interesting approach to. Uh, oh, believe it or not, uh, my first game, Sonic One, on the Sega Master System says Lilith, and I live in the US. Yeah, American ma Master Systems are pretty rare these days. Uh, known as the Mark III in Japan, I believe. The Sega Mark III. Sega Mark III, my goodness. Yeah, they, there was a Mark I and a Mark II. Uh, but they are sort of incredibly strange and hard to find consoles now. Um, but the Mark III had an FM unit attachment as well. Uh, and the most met Master System oh. emulators, you can turn that on for games. Uh, for almost any game. And what it'll do is it'll replace one of the sound. Uh, sampling fields on the MIDI table with an FM synthesizer, so it sort of changes all music. It's really interesting. It's kind of like how the Japanese NES, the Famicom, disc system had an FM attachment as well. It had an additional sound chip. Which, uh, when they brought the game stateside, they just had to compensate for not being there and had to recompose some of the music. Sure. Some more random trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I realised that I'm quite um. No, you're concentrating on something that's actually hard. I'm just <laughs> talking about the master system. That's okay. I do like listening to you talk about this kind of thing, though. Ah, oh, freaking. Mistress Mistress Lilith says, "Did you know you can run Famadom, uh, Famicom Disk System games on the Retro Creek?" I did know that, Lilith. I saw your posts on the Atari Age forums or wherever that is, uh, where you specifically were quite interested in that. <laughs> it's funny. Anytime I look up any Retro Freak posts for technical support or to see if there's a new firmware update, I usually find a bunch of stuff posted by Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually quite active on that community. Yeah, let's move that next to Swap Note. Nice. 
Are you going to pick up Pokemon? Have you picked up I Pokemon? am. Um, uh, I think I'm going Sun because I know two people. Uh, no, sorry. I think I'm going Moon because I, I know two people are Sun. Okay. Did you go Sun or Moon? I went Sun. You went Sun, yeah. So I've, I know a couple have got Sun, so I might go. I might go Moon. Plus, uh, Moon has a, a legendary name with the name Luna in it, so. <laughs> it's Plus, it also has the um, time inversion, if that's in, if that's your thing. Yeah, I'm better than Night Owl anyway, so. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't going to pick it up, but then I saw it. And then I just picked it up. And I was like, oh, getting into it now. Yeah, actually, I am more so than um, than even X and Y. Than even X and Y. <sighs> <laughs> That's it. Let it all out. <laughs> 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 That's fair. I want to finish this level, though. Do you know, I just this yeah. is this is too big to not be the last one. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I, I get that feeling. It's as like well. a really fucking long le level. Um. So yeah, once uh, once I get all the Christmas shopping out of the way, uh, I'll maybe see about grabbing one of those, you know, US eShop vouchers that I, I use. And uh, get Moon. <laughs> Lilith says, I think I've played Pokemon Hacks for longer than I've played Moon. She does play a lot of Hacks from what I see in the, <laughs> the like, Fair. patches. And, uh, I just beat one that had three regions. Uh, red. Uh, and Red had a level 100 Mega Mew Mewtwo Y. Oh, bloody <laughs> hell, really? Okay. But the story was the worst thing ever. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that'll depend on yeah, which version you're playing. In terms of Pokemon story, I feel like the last time that they really tried to do something different with the story was uh, Black and White. Because mm. they tried to make it serious. Ish. It's a bit of, you know, moral quandary. Should we really be making these monsters fight each other? Um, that's Let's resolve this by having our monsters fight each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, there's a trope in anime and manga where uh, the good guy just beats up evil until they join him. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just knock some good into him. Uh, yeah, I assumed it was. I assumed it was red, as as in the Mount Silver boss. Yeah, so I assumed it was a. Uh, a red and uh, a, a gold and silver hack. I fell down a hole. <laughs> oh, oh no! You're oh no! Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. Was, no, red as in the Mount Silver boss. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Um. Yeah, it's pretty funny that someone would hack Pokemon from Pokemon Y back into Gold and Silver, but... That was an Emerald hack, but one of the regions was Johto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> someone hacked all of Johto into Emerald then. <laughs> right? Seems like quite a lot of work, but fair enough. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a big fan of... Uh... I mean, I haven't... I don't have any favourites off the top of my head, but obviously I'm... Um... A big supporter of hacks and patches. Uh, one of my old internet handles is in uh, credited in a translation patch for a SNES game. Nice. Uh, I didn't actually translate anything, but um, I said I was going to join the project, and then I messed around with a hexadecimal editor, and I think I changed a bunch of random Japanese characters to punch. Uh, which might not have been an accurate translation. Uh, <laughs> and then years later, when they actually finished it, I saw that I was in the credits at the very near the very end. Aww. So I was like, "Wow, they, they remembered me." This is when I was like, you know, a dumb twelve-year-old. So, uh... uh... 
up, and it's a good way to learn hexadecimal. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that. Well, that was how we learned a lot of stuff, isn't it? Just like random fucking around, yeah. like on the internet. Yeah, really. I mean, it's totally just like, like experimenting mods, uh, modding games. Was like you know some of the biggest game developers in the world probably came from that. Now uh, the whole team that did Left 4 Dead. When Valve swallowed them up, uh, they were originally a modding team. Ooh. You know, like Counter Strike came from the mod. Everything Unreal is basically from the Unreal Tournament engine, so. <sighs> is that a good sigh or a bad no, sigh? No, it's a bad sigh. Oh. I was just ever so slightly too slow. Wondering whether I should put a countdown on this. You've been going for about an hour and five minutes. Bloody hell, really? That went quickly. That's what happens when I drown everybody in knowledge. <laughs> I feel so educated though. <laughs> I, I always learn so much. <laughs> uh, I actually got a Dreamcast running on my shield portable. Ah, the shield's really cool. That's, a, that's an interesting thing. Have you seen the shield? Uh, no, what's the shield? Susan. The shield is Nvidia's little tablet thing. It's got like a controller. Okay. Um, and it's a. Uh, it's basically Nvidia's attempt at an Android tablet, but it uh, is very good for. It's got a lot of horsepower in it, so it's really good for emulation. Okay. Um, it can also act as a remote terminal for PCs, so it can like. It's like the Steam Link a bit. Yeah. Um, if you you might have occasionally see advertisements for it when you install your when you update your Nvidia drivers, it's like, oh, stream this to your your shield. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically a, a really powerful Android device. And uh, got like a, a proper controller. Oh, Nightbot's back. Hello, Nightbot. <laughs> Road to 100, we're at 91. Got we are at 91. We got another two out of Kitty on Sunday. Uh, and we got two on, on Friday. Yes, we we're. we're getting there, we're getting there. I haven't really looked too much into Dreamcast emulation, and I assume it's come on quite a bit from what I remember. Saturn was always the difficult one, because the Saturn was a multiple CPU system. Oh, so close. <laughs> would you like me to would you like me to be quiet while you do this? Because no, this, no, no, this no. Looks, it's it's this, okay because this, it makes it it makes it less tense, if that makes sense. I, I was gonna say this looks intense, like if I was on my own, I'd probably just like already given up a long time ago. <laughs> get get, just slap get Rob to get you like a, a bowl of ice water. <laughs> I snap my keyboard in half and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking more for your hands, but yeah, you could do that. It's not really my hand that's the problem. I so I think like because I've got my left arm resting on my armrest and then at a slightly funny angle to hit the space mm. bar. Yeah. And it's going like a bit kind of weird on like the outer edge of my hand. So I yep. think I'm like leaning on a nerve or something. Right, okay. Either that or I'm having some kind of heart attack, which is, um, might be a possibility, you know. <laughs> well, you've, we've got to do something to improve <laughs> our followers. It gets posted on Kotaku. <laughs> I'll make it on Twitch Fails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Uh. Uh, if you need to grab a drink or something, let me know. Throw off the technical screen. No, it's okay. Throw off the right back. No, it's no problem. I'll just leave him to die over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I but probably yeah, should uh, put some kind of countdown on this before I can do completely lose sensation in my left hand. Um, also, I feel like I'm going a bit cross-eyed. <laughs> 
Oh, it'll be like that Guitar Hero thing where you yeah. watch the... <laughs> well, just watch everything's the gonna start... The song. Yeah, yeah, and everything's gonna start scrolling to the left, like... <laughs> and I'm like, oh god, oh... <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Um... Alright, well let me know the next time you die. Okay. Okay, I gotta die now. <laughs> You can't die now? I can't die now, no! <laughs> okay, good, good. Ah, oh, I died. Alright, that's ten. God damn. <laughs> oh, it's just like, you know, it's so close, I can taste it, you know, but I'm not actually sure how long this level is, and I'm yeah. not sure, like, if I knew how long this level was, whether that would make it better or worse. Yes. You're just staring into the jaws of the beast at this point. Yeah. This is pretty similar to me and Mario Maker, just like... <laughs> can I see the flag? Is there even a flag? But, you know, like, at the points where I've died, yep. would it be better to know that I was only a couple of feet from the goal? Uh, yeah, that's not terrible. Or that there was, like, a whole other, kind of, two or three chapters to this. Yeah, a whole other section. I suppose we should call them verses. Ah, yes, there are songs. Join Sue for the Bit Trip concert. <laughs> oh, where you just listen to the same song, the same <laughs> section of the song over and over again because I can't pass the level. <laughs> it's like freaking clang all over again. <laughs> that seemed pretty cool. That, that was like cool. It was cool. You know, I still haven't finished that fucking game though, and I swear, like, I'm only like two or three levels from the end. You did, uh, you did get through massive chunk in a single stream. I did, yeah. That's like through sheer dumb luck. <laughs> um, I only managed to get through that um, bit that I was stuck on by just brute forcing it. Yep. There was no skill involved whatsoever. Brute force is a valid uh, strategy in computer science. Yeah. Sometimes it means hitting a server with a hammer, but... <laughs> oh! I died! Nine. <laughs> that was a Man, good run, that, that was really long. I actually paid attention to how long that was this time. But... That was a really long run. Maybe I should have changed Nightbot's message to want to make Susan feel better. No. Please, <laughs> Please follow, like, and subscribe. <laughs> it's okay. It's alright. I know who I am. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. I'm really gonna enjoy closing my eyes tonight <laughs> and going to bed. Although I'll probably see these um, run to the dream. You just have to dream. replace everything with sheep. Yeah. It's just endless jumping sheep. You know the worst thing? What's the worst thing? I have a really itchy nose right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have a boyfriend for that? Isn't that what he does? <laughs> no. Scratch your nose. No, because then it'll block my line of vision. <laughs> That'll be even worse. It's fine, so if my eyes start watering. Yeah, this expression on my face is like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my I'm god. It, I'm, I'm in so much watching. pain. <laughs> oh, my <Intense>. skin <laughs> is so painful. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. Mega. I died. Oh, eat. <laughs> oh my god. I'm now, I'm now like, oh my god, my nose is like so itchy. <laughs> I'm not counting these as 
deaths, by the way, because I'm not playing. Okay. Oh yeah, not not killing these ones. Yeah. Oh right, I think I got. <laughs> My eyes are like watering and everything. Mass scratching of the nose. Yeah, can you believe it? My God. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was Aww. unbelievable, like the pain. Perso. Oh, I'm alright, I'm alright. Okay, alright, let's go again. Wait, what's, where's first gear again? Oh. <laughs> what am I on? Uh, I think you were on eight. Plenty of time. But even if I don't finish it, know that I tried, and that's what's important. That I tried. <laughs> Important thing is you had fun, Boyle. I wouldn't say I had fun, but <laughs> not at this point. <laughs> have you seen the Have you seen the show Brooklyn Nine Nine? Oh yeah, I fucking love that show. It's one of the uh, few yeah. comedies that very consistently makes me laugh every episode. Who's your favourite? Um, I like Terry. I was gonna say Terry and Holt are my favourites. Ah uh, yeah, I love Holt too. Um, uh, or or Holt when he, especially Holt when he bounces off of certain people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there was a an episode I was watching. Uh, what season have you up to, by the way? Um, I finished season the one that aired. Ah, the one that aired. Um, I died. Uh, Seven. the most recent one. Sorry. Uh, three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is. I mean, four is airing right now. But yeah. No, I haven't started that one yet. Okay, so I'm about I'm about halfway through three right now. Uh huh. Uh, and there was an episode there where uh, Jake and Holt had uh, the mumps. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. And they were trying to solve a case together, and there was yeah. a bit where Holt had gone so insane that he was just writing case on a window. Yeah. <laughs> He's just writing case. Yes. All the bit, so all the bit where like they get so pissed off with each other, and then they start fighting, but they're both so stupid and swollen, and then they yeah. just end up grabbing each other's like faces, like like pinching as hard as they can. And, they, and they'd like name them like Pacifica and things. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. Um, also, the Christmas episode was amazing. Um, which one? I can't remember. Uh, Jake had forgotten to get um, a boil a present, uh, so he went with Gina after hours to uh, a shopping mall. Oh yeah, and then they thing. got they were there was and a robbery. It, when it turned out to die hard. <laughs> yeah. And Jake was so happy. She's so excited about it. I remember. Yeah. And he yeah. was really annoyed that one of the terrorists was named Matt. Yeah. <laughs> like, why can't you have a why can't you have a German name? <laughs> Uh, my German friend Perry was uh, found. There was also an episode around the same time uh, where this, some Swedish people came over. Oh yeah, people. when they were and they were like super competent at their jobs. They were super competent at their jobs, and they were like, "And we speak German and Spanish and French and all the all this, uh, but not Danish. Danish is a language for for garbage people." <laughs> and, <laughs> and that made that made Perry laugh. <laughs> A lot of Europeans are like that, where they'll have one language that's in... Where they just refuse to learn. Yeah, like, it's, it doesn't... It, it just doesn't, like, it doesn't sound right. No, I died. Uh, six, I think. Um, Lilith is kind of sad. I couldn't read the rest of that. Uh, I'm kind of sad that the Sigma, which was the the one with the cheaper one, the, 45, uh, the, the $50 one, can't play Saturn games, even though the Indigo... Uh, the Indigo can. Uh, I, I suspect the reason for that is because the Saturn is notoriously hard to emulate. Uh, and the reason that is is because it had a multi-CPU architecture. So you look at something like the PS1, uh, and games for the PS1 were, I mean this is a layman's way of saying it, but they were basically programmed in C++ effectively. Imagine that they were basically programmed in C or C++, which is a really uh, it's a difficult but well understood language. So that made porting things to the PS1 really easy. Uh, and it made it uh, easy to develop for. The Saturn was some crazy multi-CPU architecture, and so was the N64 actually. 
Um, and that made uh, putting games in the Saturn really difficult, and unleashing the full power, power of the Saturn difficult as well. People forget that the the Saturn is mostly remembered for its 2D games, because uh, it was kind of designed first to be a more powerful 2D console. Um, I died. Uh, five. Uh, but the Saturn actually had, you know, the first versions of some quote-unquote PS1 cl classics. Uh, so, for example, Tomb Raider came out in the Saturn first. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night came out in the Saturn first. Resident Evil came out in the Saturn first. Or at least around the same time. Uh, Resident Evil and Night, I'll be so sure about it, actually. Um, but most of those had Saturn versions that ran in 3D and everything. So the Saturn was fully capable of 3D, it was just, it was so hard to make it work because of its crazy multi-CPU architecture. It's a similar situation to the PS3. Remember how it had that crazy cell chip? Mm -hmm. It had a 7-core architecture, and the only people who seemed to be able to totally figure it out were Naughty Dog. Um, whereas other developers sort of struggled. Uh, when developers could figure it out, the PS3 was potentially capable of like running things better than a 360, but its architecture was so complex that most developers didn't. So that's why you get a lot of cases like uh, the PS3 version of Bayonetta being really terrible, um, versus the 360 version which runs at like a silky smooth 60. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a... The Saturn has, re uh, along with the N64, has remained one of those hard to emulate systems. And so a lot of these emulator boxes do struggle with N64 and Saturn emulation. Uh, which is which makes the N64 emulation on the Wii U really interesting, because that's official emulation from Nintendo. Uh, and it's always interesting to see what they did to emulate each specific game, because N64 emulation is different. Whereas it's you see that versus their NES emulator on the Wii U, which is garbage. Uh, it runs games at a low contrast, and probably to prevent screen burning, but it looks really blurry and low contrast. Whereas uh, the emulation they've got on the NES Mini is actually just basically pixel perfect. It's basically what it should be on an emulation box. Admittedly, the, the NES Mini has other issues, like, you know, being unacquirable by human hands and uh, uh, two small controller cords, but um, the supplies are ah! Yeah. I died. Four. I knew that it was, was coming as well. That Fucking was one that of your red, longest. That red ball! God damn, I knew it was there. And I was Can ready for it, I just missed the timing. Ah. <sighs> Ready ball? Ready ball. <laughs> Let's go again. That was so close, I was like at like maximum and everything. And the music was like thumping so you know that you're probably... Well, I feel like that was near in the end anyway. Ah, here we go. The Saturn version of Resident Evil was later, but it had bonus modes. It had a battle game, mini game and stuff. And it was an alternative ending where Wesker gets clawed by Crimeiras. <laughs> Ugh, I died. Stupid mistake. So that's you on down to three? Oh man. What are you looking at? Me? Uh, I'm just looking at this retro engine Sigma to see if it'll actually end up 50 or equivalent here when it hits the UK. Um, I'm wondering if I should get rid of my retro freak because I've been having problems with the firmware actually. Really? Yeah, it's, uh, it's such a cool little system with such an interface that if you load more than 500 ROMs on it, okay, my bad I guess. But um, you know, if I'm going to have one of those boxes, I want 
and it can take 32 gigabyte SD cards on it. Uh, it should be able to handle those. My Game Boy... A Game Boy emulator that runs inside of a DS can read ROMs faster than the Retro Freak can. <laughs> There's something wrong with its firmware uh, uh, there. So yeah, if you load more than 500 ROMs on it, it seems to be really prone to crashing. Um, uh, which is a huge bummer. Uh, the idea of the box for me, I mean, I like the ability to be able to read root cartridges, but the idea of the box is it's absolutely tiny, it's like the side, size of my hand. Um, and I can stick that in my bag and take it to my friends and have complete libraries of a whole bunch of systems. And you know, and it can be powered by USB and it can plug in HDMI. Like, that's what I love about that thing. But if it doesn't actually work <laughs> sometimes. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, potentially I could get rid of the Retro Freak, either return it to the distributor or, or sell it on and mention, hey, don't put more than 500 ROMs on it. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit of a problem. Uh, oh, great! I should just let that one go. So I'm down to two. Two. I think that's about right anyway, I can tell I'm getting tired. I swear like half of the stream is just going to be me like really cross-eyed. Oh, I died! Does that count? Does... Oh. That was really quick. Does that count? No. Okay. Let me know your next proper death. And I'll okay. Death. Real death. <laughs> so we're down, we are down to two now. Okay. Cake or death? Cake or death, yeah. Um... Death. No, only joking, cake. <laughs> cake! Oh man, I had really good mince pies the other day. Somebody brought in mince pies that they got from like a bakery near their house. And I'm not really a fan of mince pies at all, really. Ah. But I took one to be polite and then I was like, actually, these are really good. And I was like, wow. So. Was it really excellent pastry or a really good filling? Or... Ah! I died. Um, one? It was a bit of both, really. Yeah. Which was which is surprising because I don't really like. I like the pastry, but I don't like um, the filling at all, really. Um, so that was impressive. I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the filling. You know, for years, like an embarrassingly long time into my 20s. Uh, I thought mince pies actually meant them. I didn't <laughs> ever know they were savoury. I didn't know they were like, just fruit pies, basically. Yeah. Like no one had told me that. I never considered it. I just was like. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Because if you, if for you, mince is like mince meat, then. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, what? Uh, but it turns out I didn't like them anyway. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Uh, but. But maybe but you haven't it, found the mince pie for you. I, exactly. Uh, my my friend Perry was telling me that her mom makes pretty good mince pies as well. So yeah, maybe it's the preparation. Uh, I know you're an excellent cook. Do you do much baking? Um, this is my first year baking a Christmas cake, like a full-on Christmas cake, soak that fruit for weeks type thing. Right. Um, it seems to be going okay so far, and I do do baking. Like at my last job, we used to have a um, cake club where. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. Yeah. yeah that's really cool. Every every week, um, we would rotate round, and it would be somebody's turn to, bra to bake, and we would all take a break on like a Tuesday afternoon or something, and sit downstairs and share some cake. Nice. Um, and yeah, so I used to bake for that, and I did do a lot of baking back in you know, a couple of years ago. But then I was like, yeah, I've got a small family; nobody really eats the stuff that I bake. <laughs> Um, you, don't, you don't have the volume for it. Mm. But what I might do this year for Christmas is um, bake cookies for gifts. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. Because you can do some really fun things with cookies over the holidays. And they keep a little bit easier than anything else would. Yeah. It's all sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. Nice, yeah. Um, my friend Katrina's oh. really... She's, I mean, she's a good cook as well, but she's always been more of a baking person. 
her her husband Jack is more the the, the cook, and she does sort of more fun baking type silly things. Rudy Ball! Oh, I was watching, I didn't want to say anything. I've been watching, I was like, this is this is a good run. Oh, that fucking Ready Ball. The, the, the annoying thing is that this is my last go, right? Um, that was, yeah. The annoying thing is that it takes so fucking long to get to it, it's hard to learn the pattern. Yep. God damn. This, this level, oh, I died. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's the end of that. <laughs> oh, is there, is there a relaxing like? Is there a relaxing loading screen that you can play to like let your hands heal? Uh, maybe a little bit. Oh my god, there's like, is that is like, like the last? That's like the last freaking level. It, I was right. It is the last level, and it's got like a little. Uh, you can, can't see that. It's got like a little skull. Which is the mean nice. I guess it's like the boss level almost. Just like, oh you bastard. <laughs> so that was the end of the Impetus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that's it. I'm calling it because ow. That's pretty, that's pretty good progress <laughs> for a single stream. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, Eleven levels. Straight. Eleven levels. Some uh, of those were quite simple. Entire episode. Yeah, almost an entire episode. Oh the handsies. Get it next time, you get it, you come in fresh. Yeah, coming fresh, I've had some sleep, stretched out my hands Did a bit. Did you get the pad to work? Yeah, when I got the pad to work, which is really good <laughs> because it was working earlier. Oh, I believe I do believe you, I know it seems like something. Bloody thing. Um, it's generally pretty good, but, you know, individual games can be a bit, a bit finicky sometimes. Alright, well, that was, a, that was a cool little stream. Uh, thank you to Lilith and Trinant and anyone else who joined us. And thank you for our hosts as well. Uh, Kitty oh, hosted us. Nice. And uh, I think Trinan might have been hosting us as well for a bit. Um, so yeah, and also Pixel Spire, our usual MVP. Uh, so yeah, thanks to everybody for the hosting. Uh, we were thinking originally of doing a stream tomorrow, but you know what? We might not because of the the Twitch plays Witcher Three. Uh, which <laughs> which is just gonna be, be madness. A living nightmare. It will slash be. Yeah, like, it'll be hilarious, but, like, wow. <laughs> it's uh, ambitious. So that, that's on tomorrow, uh, and I guess maybe you'll hear from us more likely on Friday. Um, so that'll probably be, I think, I think Susan is busy, so that'll be either myself, or Kitty, or Verity. So, uh, we'll figure it out, though. Yeah, we'll um, work something out. Cool, alright, well, thank you all for joining us, uh, and have a, have a good week. Uh, and, yeah... I hope maybe we got a follower, maybe we didn't. But still. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, guys, um, thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye! Bye!